Zuzve. It might be a word you've never heard before, but it's just become an official name for an object in our solar system. An incredibly fun story has kind of become a hot topic in astronomy thanks to a wonderful podcast and subsequent ex post by Latif Naza. That story is the story of Zuzve, the little sort of moon of Venus that could. But what and why is a Zuzve? Well, stick around here to find out because I want to share this story with you. This poster, a beautiful illustration of the solar system by Alex Foster, started a series of events that led to Zuzve getting its fun new name. As I said, the whole story is told on NASA's podcast Radiolab. And of course, I'll link that podcast in the description so you can go and listen to the original story. After hearing the story and seeing the poster and being an astronomer, I of course had to pick up my own copy of the poster. And of course, I'll again put a link down below in case you want to pick one up too from Alex Foster. It's really, really nice. The story then goes like this. When putting his young son to bed, Latif noticed something that he hadn't noticed before on his copy of the poster, which was just hanging in his kid's room. It was what appeared to be a moon of Venus that he'd never heard of before. But look, it's right there, plain as day, a moon next to Venus, with the slightly curious name Zuzve. Sure, it is a bit of an unusual name, but astronomers have never been the best at naming things, so it totally could have been real. However, a quick Google of moons of Venus revealed that no such moon exists. Venus has precisely zero moons. Likewise, searching the word Zuzve led to zero hits, in English at least. Just some results in Czech about actual zoos. Hmm, the plot thickens. Why would Alex put such a moon on his illustration if it didn't exist? It felt like a weird thing to make up, but still, maybe it was some easter egg for someone he knew, or a pet's name, or something similar. Latif couldn't let this mystery go unsolved, though, so he contacted two people to start with. The first was a friend who spent a decade working at NASA, Liz Landau, who was able to confirm that Venus is a moon-free zone. On the other hand, he spoke to Alex the artist, and he assured our valiant detective that he did not make up Zuzve, but that the name featured on some list of moons, and he dutifully included little Zuzve on his illustration. It was not, as Latif had pondered, some easter egg or prank inclusion. As far as Alex knew, it was a real thing. On one hand, we have an artist who says he didn't make up Zuzve, and on the other, we have NASA telling us that Venus has zero Zuzves. A quick moment to ponder, but we're quickly presented with the answer from Liz Landau, one of our new heroes. She's realized that it's not meant to be Zuzve at all, but rather it's 2002 VE. Oh, obviously. Illustrator Alex had misread his own writing when preparing the artwork, but that kind of makes sense. But wait, does this answer our question? I mean, what's 2002 VE? Well, 2002 VE is at least a real object, and it is an object that hangs out near Venus. It's not technically a moon of Venus, but it's something known as a quasi-moon. Now, quasi-moons, as I've just said, is customary in astronomy, are quite badly named objects for they aren't really that moon-like. Really, they're asteroids. 2002 VE 68, to give it its full name, is an elongated, greyish, potato-shaped rock. It's about 236 meters in diameter, rotates in about 13 and a half hours, and it may even be something known as a contact binary. This means it could be the result of two smaller objects coming together under gravity, touching and staying together. Isn't that cute? These types of objects tend to look like peanuts and are quite common in our solar system. We can't actually completely confirm this because we don't have any pictures of Zuzve itself. That's because it's pretty small and it's pretty far away and we don't have any good enough telescopes looking over there. So is 2002 VE a moon or not? Well, that's a tough one. The only technical requirement for an object to be a moon is that it orbits another celestial object. So let's look at the orbit of Zuzve. This is a sweet animation by Paul Vigart to show what Zuzve is doing, and it's sort of orbiting Venus. Let's be honest though, it's not the sort of orderly orbit we imagine a moon to have. Really, the quasi-moon is orbiting the sun, but it happens to be dancing around Venus at the same time. The issue is that this dance doesn't last forever, and Zuzve won't always be orbiting Venus. Quasi-moons like this orbit the sun with their planet, in this case Venus, but the orbits around their planets tend to be unstable. 
To be fair, they might orbit the planet for hundreds of years, but eventually they can break away and either wander space as a rogue moon, or they might get gravitationally pulled towards another planet and start orbiting that one instead. Yes, quasi-moons can swap planets. So, we've learned that Zeus Vey isn't the object's real name, and it isn't really a proper moon. So, what next? Does this story have some sort of happy ending? Well, yes, of course it does. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be telling you about it. To try and understand more about 2002 VE, Latif got in touch with the man who discovered it in the first place, Brian Skiff, who at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona has discovered many, many asteroids. So many, in fact, that when first asked about it, he didn't even remember poor old Zuzve. He did discover it in 2002, that makes sense, during the Lonios project, looking for potentially hazardous asteroids that might one day hit the Earth. They would sometimes discover hundreds of asteroids in a single night. But luckily, Zuzve was not deemed to be likely to hit Earth. However, this did mean that Brian immediately lost interest in it and stopped tracking it. But others have continued to study the object since it was discovered. What's pretty cool is that 2002 VE was actually the first ever quasi-moon to be discovered. And Latif then realised that since Brian discovered it, he was technically the person that was allowed to suggest the formal name for the object. 2002 VE is just the automatic name it was assigned upon discovery, but Brian could give it a real name. Asteroids and quasi-moons can only be named when they're sufficiently well studied and understood. A pretty vague definition, but luckily Zuzve does fall into that category. So a name is theoretically on the table. Now, you can't name an asteroid anything you want. Suggestions do have to go through a committee called the IAU, the International Astronomical Union, and the Working Group Small Bodies Nomenclature Committee that sits inside the IAU. Oof, finally said it right. It's a group of 11 people that are responsible for naming and approving names for asteroids, quasi-moons, and so on. Their job is to vet the names that are suggested for each object. There are rules like no more than 16 characters in the name, no politics, and so on. So maybe Latif could convince Brian to suggest Zuzve as the real name, to immortalize this typo and the journey that he'd been on. The only problem was, when this was suggested, Brian was not interested in the idea one bit. He's discovered over 50 asteroids, and he's had some fun naming some of them in the past, and many other asteroids have fun names too, like one called Mr. Spock, named after a cat who was named after the character. As such, Brian had kind of lost interest in novelty names, and he didn't find Zuzve an interesting enough name, or so he said when he first heard it. However, when Latif explained the full story that we've just gone through, it just about changed his mind. Another problem was that the story had to be compressed down to 360 characters to be suggested for the name, but challenge accepted. However, there was immediately a problem. Any object, like an asteroid or quasi-moon, that passes within a certain distance of Earth always gets a mythological name, just in case it does ever impact Earth. They don't want to have news stories that say Mr. Spock impacts Earth, so they have this convention. Sadly, Zuzve is subject to this rule. Its orbit can bring it too close to Earth to get a name of whimsy, and the committee doesn't tend to make exceptions. Or at least, some of them don't. If enough of the 11 people can be persuaded by the story, then there could be hope. But it all falls down to that 360 character statement. So what did they write? Quote, this object is the first identified quasi-satellite of a major planet. When artist Alex Foster drew this object on a solar system poster for children, he mistook the initial characters of the provisional designation as letters, thus coining an odd and memorable moniker. Name suggested by Latif Nasa. Brian stuck that in at the end. Overall, that sounded pretty good. Name and statement submitted. Waiting then occurred. Three and a half months elapsed. And eventually, Name approved. This quasi-moon of Venus, 2002 VE 68, is now officially called Zuzve. It's literally a real thing, and Venus now officially has a quasi-moon called Zuzve. This is the first object in space to be named after a typo, and now this poster is retroactively completely correct. Good job to everyone involved, I really enjoyed this story. Venus isn't the only planet with quasi-moons, Jupiter has a bunch that we call Trojans, and Earth has quasi-moons too. At least seven of them. And some of them don't have names yet. As such, Latif's Radiolab podcast is running a fun program to name one of Earth's quasi-moons. So if you want to get involved in that, I will leave details for how to get involved down below. Go forth, name quasi-moons, and have fun.
Thanks for watching everyone. Go listen to Radiolab for their original telling of the story and go pick up a copy of the poster that started it all. Links to all of those things are in the description of this video. So have fun. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.